children, I suppose it's fair to say, in separate couples re reside with their mother. And that would be the resident parent where the children primarily live. But the non-resident parent, which is usually the father, but not always, will tend to have maybe one or two afternoons a week for a couple of hours. I thought I had seen everything up until this pandemic. And now all of a sudden we're in a completely different place. All the rules have been thrown out the window. The problem is now there is this valid excuse. Some parents have health conditions and it's a case of trying to strike a balance between maintaining a relationship between the children and the non-resident parent and keeping people safe. I think there can be contacts where neither party has symptoms and have been self-isolating. Direct contact could arguably go ahead. Unfortunately, like anything, there are some people who will use this pandemic to their advantage um, to stop contact. I have four parents at the moment who are not seeing their children and have not seen them since around the middle of March and with no end in sight. And I can think of three clients I have who are, are not allowing the children to see uh, their father. So that's, that's seven of my own. And what has happened now is there's no arbitrator, there's no referee. The courts are only hearing the most urgent of cases at the moment, and that is very urgent cases. There is going to be an increased backlog so that by the time the courts open again, they're going to be hamstrung by the sheer volume of, of cases that have been building up while the courts have been closed. There are going to be children who haven't seen a non-resident parent for a period of perhaps three, four months. For that child, that time is lost with that non-resident parent. That's time you can never get back. Thank you.